Ah, we who are about to play salute you. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Today we're playing the fourth entry in the Swords and Sandals series, Swords and Sandals 4. It is, in my opinion, the least of all the Swords and Sandals games and certainly the most controversial. Uh, it's a game that really polarizes the fans and, um, in my opinion, possibly marked the beginning of the end uh, for the, the franchise for a while anyway, before, of course, the return with the Redux series uh, over the last few years. Um, this game was made in 2009, so it's uh, coming up on nine years since it was made, and I haven't played it in quite a lot of uh, time. Other than earlier today, when I actually first recorded this video, unfortunately, the first video I made of this, I didn't turn the microphone on, so this little guy was off. Rookie mistake. You'd think I'd know better after making at least uh, nine of these videos. Um, anyway, we're having a second crack at it so um, I've thought about my um, opinions on the game a little bit more uh, over the recording of the first video and so hopefully this uh, second attempt will be a bit better all right uh, let's get into it 2009 can you believe it time flies huh only the greatest gladiators in the heavens are immortalized as gladiators. The rest sit around and pretend to be heroes. Anyway, let's get on with it. Sword and Sandals 4, Tavern Quests. So this game is uh, set after Sword and Sandals 2, but before Sword and Sandals 3. Uh, so the, the idea is that um, Antares had been slain, uh, but the gladiators still kept fighting on at Doom Trek um, under I think uh, John the Butcher Woolridge um, took over the arena as far as I think that's the official law I can't remember for sure um, but as you can see here's um, a bunch of heroes sitting around the board we have some classic um, Swords and Sandals characters such as uh, He Chaos who is milling about Doom Trek for some reason they're all chatting to each other which is kind of fun um, got Wolfgang one of the defenders of Brandor who uh, would actually never really be seen next to the Chaos because they were arch enemies or were once childhood friends as uh, Sword and Sandals Pirates will tell you more about. Uh, we have of course the little fat kid who plays host and DM, Dungeon Master for the adventure, uh, John the Butcher and of course the player represented by this uh, mysterious hooded fellow. Um, if you notice in the background we've got Arglax the bartender uh, we have the friar and the magician uh, lady from uh, Sword and Sandals 2's shop. The father painbringer, who was the, a shopkeeper from Sword and Sandals 3. And I believe an arena champion as well. And we have a crusader and a skeleton from Sword and Sandals Crusader. So a few little nods to the old games. In the background you hear a uh, looping track of um, Dear Eliza, which is that, there's a hole in my bucket, Dear Eliza, Dear Eliza. But um, that plays on constant loop, which is can get annoying quite quick. Now, this game had um, a series of mini games you can play. Uh, all in all, 23. Um, now, these games were, in fact, uh, games that the old company we'd made as uh, when we were working there. So I think there were, um, all in all, four or five uh, game developers that came through. And um, at least half of these games are... Uh, uh, games that I made and a few of the other ones were other people's games that I uh, basically reskinned with Swords and Sandals graphics. Uh, that's mine, 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 mine. Actually, almost all of them are my games except for one or two. So um, now when you play enough of these board games, you unlock those whole mini games so you can play them. Now the idea behind Swords and Sandals Tavern Quests is it's supposed to represent an evening playing board games. Um, let's have uh, three gladiators today and uh, the dungeon master is taking them through an adventure in the form of this board game. So uh, let's load a, load a save gladiator. Uh, this is Ollie, a paladin that I made earlier, suspiciously like me. Um, he's a level two character because um, when I was making the first video, I went through one adventure with him. Um, 
Of course, he looks exactly like me um, with the, the Arnold Schwarzenegger like chest and everything. Um, incidentally, like I just don't I just resemble the generic character you see on every game box uh, from, you know, Halo to Gears of War to Uncharted. It's always this like the dark haired guy with stubble, um, this like central casting. It's pretty boring, huh? <laughs> so whenever I see that, it's like uh, mix it up a bit, right? Um, so. We're, today we're playing against uh, a bard called Seek Witch and a fighter called Vaughn with an awesome green afro. And they're controlled by Wolfgang um, and John the Butcher and myself. All right, which board game should we play today? There's actually a bunch of boards you can choose from as you level up but um, and mirror image versions of them. But I think this one is the only one unlockable to us today. It's the Veil of Heroes. Um, as you level up, you actually can take cards into the game. We have one in particular, which gives us uh, extra gold for landing on tiles, which is kind of a fun little thing. Veil of Heroes. Adventure beckons around every corner. Alright, sip of uh, delightful coffee. Instant, of course. Awful stuff. If I make enough money from these games, one day I'll, one day I'll actually buy myself a coffee machine. <laughs> Alright. So, in this game, you have uh, you're trying to collect sandals. So, if you've ever played Mario Party, you have to collect stars. In this game, it's sandals. This tells you how many fights you've won, how much gold you've won, how much gold you won from mini games, and how many adventures you've been on. So, all those things add up, and at the end of the, the uh, game, they tally it up, and then the winner is decided based on that. And that's our little uh, card there. The luck of Sphericles. So we're going first. Let's roll the dice. One. We won some gold. That's not a very exciting start. Uh, Seek which is turned. They also rolled a one. And Vaughn rolls a six. Now, enemy turns move quite quickly, so it might be hard to talk through them. So let's just focus on myself. So you can go left or right. Let's head to the um, right, actually. See if we can play a mini game. You've reached a castle of minigames. Would you like to play a minigame and win some gold? All right, we're going to be playing Barrel Fighter. So this game is using the keyboard, and I believe it's like a, a, a pirate smashing some barrels with his magical axe as you do. Whoa, they come at you fast. You gotta try and collect the coins. Each barrel you get uh, gives you some money, and each time you get hit, you lose some health. It's very much just a, um, a shoot 'em up like a Space Invaders at a fast pace, but if you're good at it, you can earn a lot, but I'm not that good at it, so I earned uh, 26 gold. Arr, you met with a cruel barrel demise when you only just be getting your sea legs. Um, again, tying in with the pirates. I've always tried to put in the gladiators and pirates into Sword and Sandals. They share the same universe. All right, so we earned um, some gold from that minigame, which is good. You want to try and earn money from minigames because it's worth a saddle to you. It's our turn again. One, two, three, four. And we lost the turn. I mentioned Mario Party before. Uh, that was a very, very him heavy influence in this game. Um, ridiculously so. Because you can even see the... Um, Different colored tiles mean different things. There's uh, mini games, you earn stars, uh, aka sandals, that kind of thing. But while we're here, originally, I want to tell you about what I planned for Sword and Sandals 4. So Sword and Sandals 3 ends after the automatons are defeated and the hero takes off for another planet. That was going to be some kind of space spin-off for the game. But Sword and Sandals 4 was going to take a hero around Brandor uh, in like a, a wagon with um, an armorer and a weaponsmith uh, traveling with you and you'd go from town to town fighting arena champions and then bringing them aboard your team and then going to the next town so it would have been a little bit sort of like a, um, almost a darkest dungeons um, multi-character type thing and then maybe a little bit of Pokemon because as you defeat arena champions they would join your party how cool did that sound? Unfortunately, it was a little too ambitious for um, what the company had in mind and the time I was allowed to work on the game and uh, I was talked into building this series of mini games using the existing assets we had and the Sword and Sandals 3 engine, which, you know, 
is fine, but my main regret is that A, I let other people uh, influence my decisions on the game when I had a better vision than what they had, and B, that I called it Sword and Sandals 4 when it really should have been Sword and Sandals Tavern Quest, and it would have been fine. It would have been just a nice spin off in the same way Crusader is a spin off and Pirates is a spin off. But for some reason, it's now Sword and Sandals 4, and it doesn't really make sense because there's no tournaments in it. You know, to be honest, it doesn't really feel to me like a um, like a Sword and Sandals game. Sadly, you know, it's got all the characters and so on, but it's just a weird spin-off. All right, you found an arena. You can summon a rival gladiator here. So this is probably the only nod to um, Sword and Sandals classic combat. We can choose. Uh, anyway, that was my rant. Like, I do get a bit down on this game, and maybe I shouldn't. There are people that like it. Let's fight the bard. So when you fight someone, they choose the stakes. Uh, and sometimes you can get quite unlucky because they'll choose to fight you to the death. This time I'm just choosing them to fight for gold. So to seek, which is a skeletal boogeyman bard. Uh, we kind of out um, rank them in a lot of our stats. So I think we should be fine. And we've got a weapon. This is using a very a simplified um, version of the Sword and Sandals combat engine in that you notice you can't move. It's basically you guys hitting each other. And for that reason, there wasn't that much strategy involved. All right, so he's given us 88 gold pieces. That's very generous of him. And that's gonna serve us very well uh, later down the track because gold plays a huge game. Oh, then he won 88 gold, so easy come, easy go. Vaughn gets two turns and chooses to fight Seek Witch and takes the money from him. So go figure. We could play a mini game if we want. Yeah, let's do it. There's lots of mini games to be had. So now we're playing Devil's Deep, which is a, um, I believe, it's a platform game where you have to um, collect coins at the bottom of hell uh, with some um, Grim Reapers chasing you. This is based on a mini game um, which was called Forest Rat, I believe. Super simple, cool, but maybe not so simple to uh, survive at because I only got 10 gold. Your hellish adventure is over. Done. That was not a great showing from me. Alright, let's roll. So we're slowly making our way across the board, having our own little solo adventures. I'm going to go this way and maybe make some ground between them. I'm going to go across the bridge. Ah, I'll lose a turn. Disappointing. See that sandal over there? We want to try and get that one though. There are also little um, mini adventures you can go on in this game, which are little text-based things where you have to roll the dice and you can, you know, fall into a river or get stopped by ruffians and that kind of thing. Oh, yes, a sandal. You want to pick it up? Sometimes it's fool's gold. No, excellent. We're we are smashing it. So it's quite a cute map. Um, my friend Tony Liu again did the uh, background art for this. He did the background art right up until uh, Sword and Sandals. This is the last one for he did. He also did the background art for um, Sword and Sandals Medieval many years later, but he didn't do the art for Sword and Sandals Five, which was done by another artist, Jared Blanthorn, who's another friend of mine. Uh, yeah, let's have a fight. Let's beat up on Sequitch again because he seemed like an easy beat. Fighting to be delayed. All right. This will really screw him over if we beat him. Combat's quite simplistic. It, without being able to walk back with the walls and push each other off cliffs, it kind of loses a little bit. And that was a bit of a design mistake that I think I made. Um, although having said that, um, one interesting thing with this Sword Town 4 is that you could play um, multiplayer. So it was um, hot seat multiplayer, meaning that I would be on the screen having my turn, and then I'd get up, and you could have a go. So you could have up to four players at once. Why can't we hit him? Come on. Ah, oh. don't, you, don't you hate when you're playing Sword and Sandals and you miss, 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 miss? It's very frustrating. You think, oh, a random number generator is out to get me. Uh, it's not out to get you. It's purely random, but sometimes it can get 
you know, in your head. All right, so we defeated him. Delayed him for three turns, which is nice. He's stuck. Vaughn is trying to catch up with us. Vaughn with his green afro. Want to play a mini game? Sure. Um, yeah, so the multiplayer uh, component, a lot of people actually, um, well, not a lot, a few people did write to me and said that they did enjoy playing this uh, around the computer. So two or three kids um, on one computer. I think that this game probably would have done all right as a mobile game uh, on an iPad or something because, you know, it's easier to hand the iPad to the next person and it does lend itself to that sort of casual um, mobile nature. All right, Night Runners is actually a fun mini game. This is based on a, a game I made called Diesel and Death, which is a motorbike game. And it's you and Belgrave racing across um, a mountainside, trying to get to the end before you get some power up. Whoa. So he's got ahead of me. I got some kind of holy water. Now I've got daggers, some speed boost. He's gotten right ahead of me. It's gonna take a lot of effort to catch up. Don't think we'll see him again. Oh, that's disappointing. I'm gonna fire more my weapons anyway. You've lost. You race poorly, sir, but do not feel too poorly. For Sir Belgrave is a most powerful knight. We only earned 13 gold, so that's disappointing. Some of the minigames are quite tough. So all those mini games, yeah, there were flash games that had been made earlier by the um, myself and others in the company, and basically I would take them and take graphics that, from Sword and Sandals, and just there's a lot of reskinned art there. Probably the only original art for Sword and Sandals Four was the um, the tavern and the uh, the maps. So you can see this game was really made on a shoestring budget. I didn't have that long to build it, and I tried my best to you know put a lot of love into it, but my heart wasn't in it i just i didn't love it and i think it kind of shows you know let's play a mini game cheer ourselves up boulder of doom take control of the molten ball of flaming rock as it carves a path of devastation through the badlands crush all in your path for gold all right so we got to try and um hit gladiators on our way down and avoid the trees and it gets faster and faster so let's see if we can see some gladiators this is a really hard one the boulder gets bigger. It's quite quite a nice artwork. Oh, that was a gladiator. I missed him. Not a great game for earning gold, that's for sure. Oh, there's one. Ah, oh, great. 18 gold. We'll take it. Um, I did the music for all those mini games using a program called uh, Fruity Loops, which is great for making 8-bit style retro music. We're in first place. We're trying to get to the edge of the board. I can't remember what that thing is. I think that's an adventure. Do we want to fight? I think we have to. Let's fight. Do we fight Vaughn? Are you feeling brave? Yeah, let's give Vaughn a battle. Mix it up. So this is a battle for gold, which is could actually change the uh, results of the battle if I lose this. So we want to we want a good shot. You got a weapon too, and he's a fighter. So this is you know that. Oh, it's cut out for us. Yeah, this is using the Sword and Sounds 3 combat engine, as I mentioned before. Uh, as you level up, you do get more and more powerful spells and things. You notice you haven't seen any shops or anything yet. They come after you've won the board game. Gives his gold. He's pretty happy to be given his gold and losing battle. I guess, you know, this Tavern Quest is quite good natured. These are made up gladiators, unlike the real gladiators of the <laughs> other games, supposedly. Seek which is trying frantically to get to the end before us because you get a flag. I mean, you get a sandal to reaching the flag. But we've prevailed. So now the game is over and it's time to hand out the awards and decide a winner. First to reach the flag was myself. That's great. Gladiator with the most gold was Seek Witch. I won the most fights. So I'm leading at the moment. Seek Witch. Ooh. Most minigame gold. Who's gonna win? Three sandals. Oh, fate masks. We didn't get to talk about fate masks. Good stuff. We won. And if you'd eliminate other characters, they uh, turn ghostly and they're out. First place. So I think we level up. Level up. 
I'm playing the demo version on Fizzy, um, just because I can't find my original. I know it's somewhere. Unlock the minigame, cool. So every time you level up, you'll either get a card or a minigame or some kind of reward. Gladiator Talk. Gladiator Talk. Gladiator Talk. Gladiator Talk. Gladiator Talk. I uh, sang that song, of course. I think in my previous life I was a musician. I wish I was anyway. I'm going to have a biscuit. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. All right, so you can buy weapons such as a katana or um what's that level three weapon yeah let's get a katana sorry that's really um bad form to be eating and let's playing at the same time that's why i'm no pewdiepie right not yet anyway shall we buy some silk sleeves and what else can we afford silk pajamas Let's get ourselves some clothes because I wouldn't mind maybe trying one more thing. Um, can we afford a helmet? So these were the shops on Sword and Handles 3, except um, the prices are a lot uh, lower because you don't get as much gold as you do um, from fighting in Sword and Sandals 3 and you um, it takes longer to, to win a board game. So we can... Oh, was there a hat that was cheap? No. Okay. All right. So to get our katana on, we can dual wield, which is kind of cool, and get ourselves. There we go. Still no top, but that. So we're back here now at the title screen. I started to play a second game, but then figured there's not that more that I uh, needed to show you. Um, Sword and Sandals 4, as I mentioned earlier, is certainly not the most uh, beloved game of mine. Uh, it's the game that I wish I'd done something else with. But having said that, it's a game that some people like, and that makes me smile because these games are more than just about me. They are also um, about the community and the, the memories that they create for other people. and. If you had fun with this game and you and your friends sat around and played it, then that's awesome and the game did its job. Uh, if you did enjoy this game, let me know in the comments below um, because I would love to hear it. Um, it's not a game that I'll probably ever make a Redux version of because there's so many other things I'd like to do, but um, if you did enjoy it, you can still get it. Um, it's available on uh, eGames. Uh, my wonderful publishers you can go to egames.com and get the entire series quite cheaply and that includes this game so you can sit around and play with your friends if you like um yeah it's i keep thinking of sword and sandals 4 and the missed opportunity of what i really wanted to make which was that uh, travel around brand or uh, fighting arena champions in a wagon and maybe one day i will make that um but, you know, it is what it is. It's nine years ago, and um, it is certainly a game that I think would have done quite well as an iPad game, you know. Uh, next up, we'll be playing um, some more role-playing games, probably a, an Ultima game, um, and maybe a couple of other arcade games. I keep meaning to do Rastan. And then we'll tackle... Eventually, we'll tackle the Sword and Sandals Redux series, but... I wouldn't mind maybe trying some of my other games. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about Gross Out, which was using the Sword and Sandals combat engine. We can try that. And there's also another Sword and Sandals game, uh, which was came out on the iPhone about five years ago and then was removed some years later. Um, and we can check that out for those who have never heard of it. Until then, uh, thank you for being with me. And um, as always, love your comments. If you enjoy the videos, please like them and subscribe them. Uh, hi to all my new subscribers. I, re I really do appreciate it. It's a lot of fun. And I will keep making these videos as long as you keep enjoying them. And probably even then after you don't. <laughs> um, have a wonderful weekend and uh, bye for now.